Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're going to do some Praxis Core math. These math problems are similar to what you will see on the Praxis Core exam, the middle school math, ACT math, any standardized math exam will have questions like these. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off with a percentage problem. Remember, I always like to look at my answer choices first, and I can see that I'm in percents here. Let's go ahead and read the word problem here. Of the 24,400 students graduating with a four-year degree at a university, 6,422 will apply for entrance into a higher education degree program. To the nearest tenth of a percent, important, what percentage of students will leave the university? This is important after receiving their four-year degree. So 6,422 are going to go on and get higher education degrees. The rest are going to leave the university. So how do we figure this out? Well, let's take the total number of people at the university 24,400 and subtract the 6,422. And when we do that, we get 17,978. This is the number of students who will leave the 6,400 ish, 6,422 students. They're going to stay and get more degrees. The rest are going to leave. And that's this number here. Well, what's the percentage? of the original. The original number is always important when we're trying to find a percent. And so all we need to do is take 17,978 and divide that by the original. Here's a little thing I like to do. When we're talking about a percent, typically the bottom number is always going to be bigger because you're going to get a point something, something, something as the answer, which you're going to turn into a percent. And when we divide 17,978 by 24,400, we get 0.7368. Now we're talking about a percentage here and you can see C and D are close. So I got to get my, my rounding correct. So first I'm going to make this a percent. I'm going to move this over two decimal points and I get 73 point six, eight. And it said round to the nearest 10th. Well, what is the nearest 10th? This is the 10th spot. And because this is an eight, that six goes to a seven. If it's a five or higher, you're going to round up. So in this case, it becomes 73.7%. That is the correct answer. Now, listen, I know that a lot of people would say, oh, you can just do this or that. Most people watching my YouTube channel struggle with math. And that's why I go through all these processes. There are some shortcuts. One shortcut I always like to do is to look at the answer choices and see if I can eliminate anything right away. If I have a look at this number here and I want to kind of estimate what the percentage is, I know that it's definitely more then 25 or 26%. I could have immediately eliminated this. Now, in my books, I make it a little bit harder for you. You can see that 73, 73, and 75% are all very close. Sometimes on the exam, though, you'll have like 25%, 26%, 70-ish percent. You might have a 50% in there and a 90%. You could eliminate 50% right away because what's 50% of 24,000-ish? number. Well, it's like 12,000, right? That's going to be 50%. So it's definitely not 50. It's definitely not 25 because it's bigger than that. And it certainly wouldn't be anything near like 80 or 90. So if you had easier answer choices here, and a lot of times you will, you sometimes don't even have to do all this math because you can eliminate the wrong answer choices. Now, again, in my study guides, I make it harder on you because I want you to be ready for the test. But nine times out of 10 on a standardized math exam, you can eliminate three sometimes four out of the five answer choices and be very close, but always double check just in case. Now, another trap with this problem, they want you to take this number here, 6,422 and divide that by 24,400. 
that would get you, I believe, 26.3%. Notice that the trap is in the answer choice and good math problems on standardized math exams will anticipate your mistakes. Remember, we have to read the entire question stem here. And when we do, we can see that we are looking for those who left 64, or 6,422 stayed. 17,978 left after getting their four year degree. So be careful with that. That question stem, that last sentence in the word problem is going to help you distinguish between those two. All right, let's do this next problem. You can see that in our answer choices, we have exponents, they're in fraction form. This can be confusing, but this is a very simple problem. Number one, look at answer choice E. I can immediately get rid of that because it is not written properly. When we have negative exponents, they become the denominator. So you can see here, I have a to the negative nine, a to the negative one. This is actually nine over a because a to the negative one equals one over a. You basically take the negative and throw it under in the fraction, all right? I'm gonna show you more about that when we actually do this problem. So you can see that answer choice E is not written correctly. We don't have um, variables to negative exponents, so I can eliminate that right away. So let's have a look at the actual question here. So we have 3A squared, BC to the third, to the second power. Well, what is three to the second power? That's going to be nine because three times three is nine. Well, what is a squared to the second power? When you have this situation, you multiply these two together and this becomes a to the fourth. Well, what's b to the second power? Well, that's basically b to the one times two. So that would be b squared. And then we have c to the third to the second power. So remember, we're gonna multiply those and this would be C to the sixth. And that's all going to be over A to the third, B to the fourth. Now, in this case, we're dividing exponents. We have A to the fourth divided by A to the third, B to the second divided by B to the fourth. When we're dividing exponents, and they're like terms. We're going to divide a to the fourth by a to the third, and we're going to divide b to the second by b to the third, b to the fourth. When we do that, you actually subtract exponents. So in this case, when we subtract three from four, we get a to the one, right? A to the fourth divided by a to the third is actually a to the one. Well, that just becomes nine a. We don't say a to the one because you don't have to, okay? Then we have b squared divided by b to the fourth. Well, two minus four is negative two. We're not gonna do this, remember? That's why we got rid of e. Instead, we're going to fix that by putting the b squared as part of the denominator. So this is gonna be b squared because b to the negative two equals one over b squared. Okay, so that goes on the bottom. And then we have C to the sixth, and we don't have anything to divide that by. So this becomes 9A C to the sixth over B squared. That is going to be answer A. And then finally, we have a percent problem again. I can see from my answer choices. Let's have a look at the question. The price of oranges was originally $2.98 per pound, but dropped to $1.99 per pound as part of a promotion. What was the percentage of decrease in the price of oranges to the nearest whole percent? Okay. So right away, we can see that it's probably not going to be 71%. That's too big of an increase. I can go ahead and get rid of that. And a 50% decrease, if we had three, let's round this to $3 here. Okay, let's just say $2.98 is $3. A 50% decrease would be that it went down one fifty, dollars right? Because if the oranges are $3 and then it went down to one fifty, dollars that's 50% because one fifty dollars is half of $3. So that didn't happen here. We only went down about a dollar. So we know that it's not 50% and we definitely know it's not 68. If it's not 50, 
it's definitely not 68. If it went down to like 125 ish, I'd, I'm not doing the, I'm doing the math in my head, then we'd be closer to 68%. So we can eliminate C, D and E right away, which leaves us with A and B, which are very close together. So I'm going to have to do the math. We have 32 and 33%. Remember, this is a problem from my study guide. So I'm going to make it harder on you than just uh, process of elimination, but we are closer to the right answer. So to find the percent decrease or increase, you do the same thing. You take the original, which is 2.98, and you subtract the new price, which is 1.99. In this case, we get 0.99. So it went down 99 cents, approximately a dollar. Now, to find the percentage of decrease, we know it went down, but what percent did it go down? We're going to take the difference between the two, and we're going to put that over the original. It's very important that we use the original number because we're trying to figure out the percent of decrease from the original price. And in this case, it's 2.98. Now, I always like to remember that the bottom number is going to be bigger than the top number. That's going to give you the percent you need because it's going to be like point something, something, something. And when we take 0.99 and we divide it by 2.98, we get 0.332. Now it says to the nearest whole percent here, and I can see that all my percentages are in regular percent. There's no, there's no decimal. So let's move this over one, two, and we get 33.2. And it says to the whole percent, well, this is not a five or more. So I can just drop that and we get 33% here. Let's do it another way, just so you can see the percentage of increase here. So let's say the original price is 199 and it increased because of inflation to 298. So, and we want to figure out what the percentage of increase was. So we do the same thing. We take the original 1.99, that's roughly two bucks. And we subtract the new price, 2.98. Now you're going to get a negative number here. It's fine. So when we take 1.99 and we subtract 2.98, we get negative 0.99. We get about a dollar here. Now I know you have this negative and that's only because we're talking about a percentage of increase here. Don't worry about the negative. Now we do the same thing. We take 0.99 and we divide that by 1.99. So just drop this negative here and do 0.99 divided by 1.99 and we get 0.497. Move the decimal point over two, and we get 49.7% rounded to the nearest whole percent. Because this is a five or more, this would be 50%. Now, we could also estimate this, right? Let's say, and again, this is not the original question. I'm just modifying it to do a percent increase. Let's say that this was the original, and this is the new. And we're trying to figure out percentage increase. Well, the original is roughly $2, yes? And the new is roughly $3. So it went up approximately a dollar. We have 0.99. Well, if the original was $2 and it went up a dollar, it went up 50% because a dollar is half of two. So if you have that kind of mental math in your mind, you could do it that way. But for those of you who don't, it's fine. Just do the math. No problem. The key is, is you take the original price, subtract the new price, you get a number, and then you put that number over the original. Don't worry about the negative if it's a percentage increase, just forget the negative, divide by the original, and that will give you your percent, whether it's an increase or a decrease. All right. I hope that helps you today. Just a little bit of math. Let me show you really quickly some of our math resources that we have on our website. All right. So if you're looking for more resources for the Praxis Core, we do have an amazing online course. You can get the full online course, which is all the subtests, or you can just get the math or the writing or the reading, depending on what you need. And it goes down to $75. Now, if you need more than one section, it makes sense to buy the whole thing. Now, if you don't want the online course and you just want the study guide, you can just get the study 
study guide that's $39.99. In it, there is tons of practice test problems. There are three practice tests for the math alone. There are just hundreds and hundreds of problems for you to work with. If you only need the math, you can just get the math section. But again, it's more cost effective if you need two or more sections just to get the whole book. Now, something to know about the online course is that it comes with the digital study guide. So if you want all of it, get the online course because you get all the videos, all the information, all of the extra practice in the online course, plus the digital study guide. So you get everything. Now, if you prefer a physical study guide, we sell the digital on our website. It's emailed to you as soon as you purchase. Make sure you put in the right email address. Sometimes it'll bounce if you don't type your email address properly. But let's say you would prefer a physical study guide. All you have to do is click this Amazon button from our website, and it will take you over to our study guide online. You can see we have over 138 five-star ratings for this, and you can buy the physical and it'll be delivered to you in paperback form. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching. Have an awesome day.